thank you very much, Chris, for putting this together. And thank you very much for Erica, because indeed, uh, much of what I'll be talking about links up very nicely, I think, with, with your talk. Um, this is basically about uh, two excavations and the popularization um, that came along with it. Um, Ambrona in, in Spain and, and Shanidar in, in Iraq. This is um, the idea of elephant hunts and the idea of man, the hunter. And this is about a flower burial and the idea of Neanderthal uh, being in fact a real, full, human, compassionate uh, being. Right? So we're going to compare uh, these two cases and what links them. So that's something I only realized uh, very recently, and so this is, this is the work in progress I'm presenting, is that they were both gliding along and being pushed along by uh, the Time Life uh, series on, on the emergence of man, right? Published from uh, the early 1970s or uh, late 1960s onwards. So, so they're maybe not so spectacular in itself or not so new, but if you look, I'm, I'm interested in this new media, um, that the Time Life series and how that kind of gave, gave these uh, excavations and the theories behind it is this huge public, public impact. So we start with um, Ambrona. This is, this is the double site, Toralba Ambrona, about 100 kilometers northeast of Madrid. Um, they have been activating there since the early 1900s. And what's significant about the site is this enormous amount of, of mammal fossils. And most of them are, are from, from elephants. And in the early 1960s, we have an Amer American Spanish team led by these uh, three scientists, in particular by, by Clark Howell. And uh, they make a huge splash, right? Uh, it's about 300,000 uh, years old, allegedly uh, the, the most important, and in any case, the oldest uh, Achillean's uh, open site in, in Europe. What they find you know, are, um, apart from the the elephant fossils that, that uh, were well known by the time, uh, tips of, of, of spears. And they developed this idea that uh, man, with, a, with the help of fire, kind of um, uh, uh, causing bushfires, driving the elephants into the, the marshes there where they got stuck, and then they were able to, to butcher them, right? So that's, that's, that's the idea behind it. And, um, in 1966, uh, with, with Clark Howell at the, at the author, um, this book is published, Early Man, uh, illustrated by the, the US painter Stanley Melsov. And we're going to uh, see now how this elephant hunt is being depicted. So they gather together, they, uh, they make fire, make their plan, right? Uh, how to cooperatively, of course, as a group, are going to hunt those don't you speed, right? And with the fire, you know, they set fire, so the elephants flee, and they end up, you know, they, they, they can't walk anymore, and then they're easy prey for um, the, the, this early man. And then they can, you know, um, have a feast. All the, the meat they, they, they like and can consume is, is right there for them. And that's how this kind of series of, of images concludes. In the evening, they, 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 they celebrate. You know, there's something. Uh, it's it's, it's um, some, some ritual about it. But this is in, extremely uh, impressive, I think. Um, my my Madrid, um, colleague from Madrid, Gonzalo Ruiz Zapatero, he has already looked at this kind of, of um, popularization and the importance of the, the visuals in in, um, in the Ambrona case, and he says, you know, he said, described this as cinematographic, right? The way Melsov uh, was putting one image after the next, so you could see the whole sequence of, of events, and that captured rapidly the, the attention of, of all the, the popularization that later on um, was published about, about Ambrona. And uh, when I ask Spanish archaeologists, well, what do you remember out about Toralba Ambrona? They don't remember their classes. They'll remember going to the uh, um, National Museum of Archaeology in Madrid, where there was a huge 
uh, model of the elephant hunt, right? And, and uh, so this is the, the hunts of Tarabon, and he says, uh, oh, finally we've got a model, right? But what he does not see is that uh, this danger sign, be careful, this idea is long being discarded by, by science, right? <laughs> Um, so, image trumps uh, the, the, the kind of the refutation of the, of the theory. And I don't need to, that ex to explain to you this idea of the, the elephant hunt, man against the big beast fighting with bears, uh, has become very popular then uh, in those decades, 1960s, 1970s, and we've seen that uh, in, in Erica's paper as well. And there's, of course, also the idea that man is smarter, and if he you know, uh, comes up with a good plan, he can uh, beat the big, the big animal. Right. So this was Ambrona. Now we go to Iraq. Um, very much in the north here, close to the Turkish border, is, is the cave of, of, of Shanidar. And again, a US team uh, in the 1950s excavated there um, and found in total, well, uh, nine remains of nine uh, Neanderthals, um, led by uh, the archaeologist from Columbia University, Ralph Solecki. And so the, the Neanderthals finds in themselves are absolutely spectacular. Um, they're they're a, major, a major find. Um, we are interested now in particular in, in what's called Shanida 4, because that is, that is the, the flower burial. So this, is, this is the cave. And, and like the, the digs go way down here, up, up to 15 meters um, <coughs> of, of stratigraphy. And this is, this is Shanida 4. And um, they, they had taken uh, samples of, of the earth and given it to a, a French palynologist, Arlette Leroy-Gourin, and she found an unusual uh, high quantity of, of pollen of six or seven uh, different, different flowers. And she published that in, in 1968. And that gave rise to the idea that this Neanderthal was actually buried and like loads of different flowers, blooming, blossoming flowers were put on, on top of him kind of recognize, well, and, and making the Neanderthals uh, kind of into compassionate beings that care about, about the dead and so on. And uh, in 1971, Ralph Solecki, here depicted with his wife, Rose Solecki, um, publishes this popular science book, uh, Shanida, the first flower people. The illusion is, 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 is clear, I think. And this is the first time we have kind of the, the idea of the flower burial uh, exposed, explained, and, and uh, from it made a bigger case about the humanity of, of Neanderthals. This is 1971. I think the book itself, although it's, it's well written and all, was not a huge popular success. But what was a huge popular success is um, a book well, authored by, by George Constable, but under the kind of scientific sub supervision of Ralph Selecki, published two years later, uh, and illustrated by, by Herb Steinberg. And this is how, how the, these Time Life series work. They are then um, in the same year that it was published in English, translated into German, French, and Dutch, later on into Spanish and, and Italian. So we have at least um, translations into five, into five languages. And this is the first depiction of, of the flower burial, right? In uh, the book by Constable in, 19, in 1973. And it had a huge impact. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the Selecki book, we have no, we have no representation of the, of the flower burial. And from then on, it just became, became a, an icon, an imagery of, its, of itself that was reproduced and, and adapted and, and um, portrayed differently in numerous uh, paintings, um, dioramas, uh, and, and other forms of, of, of visual representation. And to be seen in books, magazines, museums, and so on. So here are some, 
some more examples. And um, what is significant is that um, they're really shaken, these, these people, by the death of, of, of that person. Um, we, we see that they, they, they mourn together. Um, this is obviously, you know, uh, a, a, a group that where, where, where people uh, care for each other. They possibly, do they believe in afterlife? We don't know, but maybe. Um, so this is a part of this, and, and I think an in, in crucial uh, piece in the revision of the image of the Neanderthal that, as you know, took place in, also in the, in the post-war post period. So if we take the Neanderthal as a, as a, as a non-human, that would coincide with Erica's thesis that the animals became more human while man became more like, like an animal. Right? So this is this, this revision of the Neanderthal starts in the, in the, in the 1950s, 1960s, and goes, goes on, although with some, with, some, with some ups and downs until the, the present day. Uh, more depictions of, of, the, of the flower burial. And uh, around to the year 2000, uh, the, the theory is, is, is criticized. Um, and there are different, different other explanations for the high amount of, of pollen uh, might have just been blown in by wind. The, the, the most, um, well, uh, most people think it was actually uh, um, by, little, by little mice brought in, like who, who, uh, who had their, their, their nests down, down in, in, in their loose ground. Um, nevertheless, museums still produced uh, dioramas like this one in a, in a uh, Japanese museum. Uh, at, advised by, by a uh, well-known paleontologist, uh, Ian Tattersall. I wrote to the museum and they told me it's still up. Um, but when they bring around their, their visitors, they explain to them, well, actually, um, it's, it's kind of dis disproven. Uh, we don't actually believe in that anymore. Uh, but for the time being, we... We, we let it there, and you, you know all about the, the conservative nature of, 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 of natural history museums, the cost of the, uh, the diorama, and, and so on and so forth. Interestingly, though, in 2010, the Smithsonian in, in, in Washington commissioned another representation of the, of the flower burial. That, that rather surprised me, and um, they defend the validity of, of, of Solecki and Le Wagouin's a thesis that there was actually a, a, flower, a flower burial. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, it's certain that they're the, the only museum who have some Shanida fossils outside Iraq. So they, and, and they were, they were um, at the time um, participating in the excavations of, of Solecki. So maybe there's some institutional uh, reason for, for this or, or not. Um, but, but these are two respected scientists, they, they defend it. So it's not 100% it's not, um, discarded, say there's still some, some defendants. And you probably know that um, uh, the, the Solecki book and the idea of the flower burial uh, and the whole clan of the, the Shani Neanderthals were kind of uh, uh, inspiration for, for Jean Noel for her extre extremely uh, ex successful uh, Children's of the Earth series, the first novel, 1981, The Clan of the Cave Bear. Cave Bear. And um, she, of course, also talks about, about the, the, the flower burial. And uh, uh, this is the, the description in, in the book. She makes something different out of it, but you can see uh, how much she, 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 she picks up the imagery of, of all the flowers, all the colors um, that, in this case, Ela, the the, the human that lives with the, the human girl that lives with the Neanderthals um, brings to to Isa her kind of uh, adopted mother who who had just had just died. She's very well informed, Jean Noel. She knows, of course, that uh, the idea is being severely criticized. And what did she say? Uh, that may be the case, but it's nevertheless <laughs> a good story. So we now come to what kind of unites these, these two cases. Uh, again, it links up perfectly with um, Erika's talk. Uh, well, there's, there are two magazines, Time 
and life and they decide to um, bring out um, all kinds of, of popular science books, but they are also about, about, about history. They have all kinds of topics, um, you can see here. Um, and, well, the, 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 the sales pitch is, well, the great writing of time and the great images of, of life combined uh, will make a, 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 wonderful, a wonderful series. Um, they are not sold in, in, as such in, in bookstores, but they're directly mailed to the people who have subscribed to to one of the of the magazines, and as as I said, they they operate of course internationally and Im often immediately translate many of the of the books into into the the major languages. And uh, this is just kind of uh, the series, The Emergence of Man, twenty volumes, 1935. This is kind of the just to demonstrate it was translated the the German titles. Uh, you can see it goes from, from very early man, um, apes and stuff, to the, the Celts and, and uh, the population of, of the Americas. So everything kind of pre, that counts as prehistory is, is here in 20 volumes, right, in, in the 1970s. And um, in the 1990s, like this is material that's been then rehashed and redone and re-edited and so on and so forth. And in the 1990s, the same series, um, The Emergence of Man, is, has grown to 42 volumes, right? And um, this is actually in the reference, this photo is taken in the reference section of the, the library of the Barcelona University. So they're, they're still there, they need a whole shelf. And um, they're, they're obviously still sold in, in the 1990s. And, the, well, the cover has changed, obviously, but, but, uh, Ambrona and Clark Howell, right, uh, is still in here, and, and Constable, Solaki, and the, the Flower Burial and Shanida are still in here, right? So a huge part of the Neanderthal book is about uh, uh, the, the Shanida Neanderthals and the, and the Flower Burial. So they, they just are swept on from one edition to, to the next. And uh, I then s started asking around a little bit, um, and all these people told me in one way or another the importance of the Time Life series for, in the first two cases, Toralba uh, Ambrona. Uh -huh. For example, here, largely because of Howell's claims for precocious social complexity, the game drives, published in the Time Life for years on human evolution in the mid 60s. And, and I also asked Chris Stringer about, about Constable and the flower burial and because I, I, I asked them all about, because I was working on the Selecki book, but they all told me, no, no, well, the really influential thing was not the Selecki book, it was the Constable book from, from 1973, the Time Life book, right? Um, so only then I kind of realized, oh, right, there's a, there's a kind of a bigger story to, to this. And um, obviously, as we've, we've heard before, um, these um, theories about, about human, human origins, uh, their, their behavior, um, their, their, their social complexity and so on and so forth are published both in, in academic and, and popular media. What's parallel or in both cases is that um, both Howell and Solecki started, well, they wrote some scientific articles, but the big, the big ideas were put forward in in those books, right? And uh, they always said, well, the big monograph uh, will come later for us, we have to publish this and that. And <laughs> as often happens, the big monograph never uh, was published. And uh, I think, well, this is, this is a, a well-known idea that um, you can uh, much more easily publish a controversial or new theory in a popular science book because there is no peer review um, you can kind of have much more your freedom to, to express your ideas, to speculate, and this is kind of a, a classic case. Um, bound up together with the huge kind of impact and the huge, um, the, the, the far reach of sort of the translations and uh, the editions and re-editions of, of the Time Life books, right? Um, obviously, these ideas, man, man the hunter, 
uh, on the one hand, uh, hunting the elephants with the spear, and this idea that the Neanderthal is not a brute beast, but actually a compassionate social being, uh, are great stories, right? Great stuff for these, for these books. That's what, what made them um, so successful. Um, we all have heard about the importance of visual rep representations to kind of, um, not only to divulge this idea, but that kind of the, 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 the images kind of take over the thinking, right? That's a bit uh, the, 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 the thesis of, of, of Stephanie Moser, right? That it kind of guides the research to where we're, there we're going. Um, the truth is, I've only stumbled about this very recently. I don't know very much about, about this um, uh, time life machinery, all the, all the additions. Um, I don't have the exact numbers, for example. Um, that's something that still, still needs, needs to be studied. Um, but in these books, but also in these museums, as we've seen, uh, these, these kind of discarded theories. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, you know, the, the, the man, the hunter, got uh, into this dispute and in, this in the 1970s, and it was rather man, the, the scavenger, right, who was, who was uh, eating uh, meat of that, that elephants. Um, that was a new theory in the 1970s. Uh, they live on, uh, and not only in the popular realm, in the, in the Smithsonian uh, Institution as well. So I think uh, in the context of this conference, uh, when we look at all the different media, you know, in which um, science population take place, uh, and I kind of wasn't aware enough of those. Maybe we should look at these kind of time life books as well. Thank you very much. Yeah,